हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू दिस न्यू क्लास एंड वी आर डीलिंग विद वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक्स व्हिच वी डील विद इन आवर एवरीडे लाइफ दैट इज रिसोर्सेस and you hope you remember the chart that we were drawing yesterday and the divisions of resources into different groups and so on so we shall today see in detail what are the different types of source the resources and how are they useful or how are they divided on what basis and so on so first on the basis of origin on the basis of origin how they are originating or how they are originated we can divide resources into into two biotic resources and abiotic resources biotic and abiotic these are the two types of resources and from the biotic resources we can know the name by from the name itself we can know biotic biotic and abiotic so biotic is with life and this is without life no life and there is a difference between biotic resources and abiotic resources you can take your textbook page number 2 so biotic resources and they are obtained from the biosphere from the uh, living world and have life they have life for example we human beings are biotic resources then the flora and fauna the flowers the animals the plants and the fish the animals the livestock they are all resources what kind of resources they are all biotic resources so only one thing you need to remember biotic resource means they have life having life then abiotic resource means just the opposite the resources that do not have life let's see the example so all those things which are composed of non living things are called abiotic resources so for example rocks minerals and so on so all the things that are composed of non living non living means not having life you know the example rock rock has no life it remains in the same place in the course of time it may get worn out but you will never move or it will never grow it remains the same or it may even become less in the course of time and minerals that are under the earth they have no life so that is the uh, division of resources into two based on the origin how they are originated originated now on the basis of exhaustibility we can divide them again into two that is renewable and non renewable as we have said here renewable and non renewable so renewable resources which can be renewed or reproduced by physical chemical or mechanical process then it is known as renewable resources so a resource that can be renewed can be brought back again by different process for example let's say by using physical resource, physical um, process or using some chemical process or some mechanical process so whatever process we may use we are able to bring back them again for reusing again that is called 
renewable resources. We can renew them again. We can reuse again. And let's say example, solar energy, wind energy. So solar energy can be used again and again because it is coming. We don't need to produce solar energy, but we only need to convert it using some technique. We need to convert the solar energy into very stored into the battery cell and we can use it for light or we can use it for other purpose and so on. In the same way wind energy. The wind is there. We can use again and again. By using the wind does not get off. We can use it again and again. Then water. The water keep on flowing especially in the river. So we can block it. Use it for producing electricity. Then forests are there. One life. So all these things will go on growing. Trees. The new trees will grow. So it will not completely get off. But if you misuse and cut away all the forest, then all the trees will get off. But if you keep on using in a uh, proper way, sensible way, then it will continue to uh, help us, continue to serve our needs. Then the renewable resource may be further divided into continuous or flow. So it is not renewable. In this renewable resource we can even say there is a continuous resource and flow. And you can see in the uh, figure 1.2 what we have divided there. Then another resource is Non renewable, so we said renewable that will not get over easily, it will go on for many more years. But there is just the opposite, also is possible. There are some resources which cannot be renewed if you use it, is finished, it is no more available, it is no more can be brought back, or no more can be used. Let's see what are they. So, these are non renewable resources occur a very long geological time so they need a long time to occur to take place so uh, the non-renewable resources they are not just taking place or not just uh, being formed under the earth with a short period of time they take such a long period of time for example minerals and fossil fuels are examples minerals that are found under the earth the iron ore and other minerals that are found under the earth it may be millions of years old so millions of years ago uh, so many uh, things um, went under the earth due to earth uh, cubes or other uh, natural process it uh, went under the earth or remained there uh, and slowly slowly they turned out to be some kind of minerals that is how the petroleum products all that is found under the earth. It is some uh, living beings like animals, and trees and all those things went under the earth, remain there under this great pressure of the earth for such a millions of years. Then slowly, slowly they turn out to be the minerals. So if you use these things, if you mine out the minerals, or if you mine out the petroleum products, we can't use them again and again. We can use them only once. For example, if you buy petrol and put in your vehicle, as you drive the vehicle, the petrol will get over slowly, slowly. We cannot bring by what is already used. That is already used and finished. So that is not renewable. So once we use it, it is used forever. And no more can be brought by, no more can be reused again. And these resources take millions of years in their formation. So, as I said, they take millions of years for being formed into minerals under the earth. And some of the resources like metals are recyclable. And some like fossil fuels cannot be recycled and get exhausted with their use. So some of the minerals that we get from under the earth, for example, let us say the iron ore. 
From iron ore we take out, we purify it and make iron. We know iron is used for different purposes for making buildings, bridges, houses or making vehicles and other heavy machines. All that is made of iron. So this iron we can reuse again, we can recycle it again. So that is advantage of this. We take out from earth and afterwards when we get spoiled iron, even if a broken iron, we can give it to the factory, they will recycle it and make something new out of it. But in the case of a fuel, fossil fuel, it is not possible. What we use, the petrol or diesel or kerosene or LPG or whatever we use, it is finished. It cannot be used, brought back again. So that is the two types of resources, renewable resource and non-renewable resource. And non-renewable resource we said, some can be recycled, some cannot be recycled. And what can be recycled, we said the example of iron ore. Iron, when it is some uh, machine, let us say, or vehicle, old vehicle, it is already spoiled. But we can take out part by part, the, all the iron parts, we can take it out, we can give it to the factory, they will make use for something else. Or they will melt it in the factory and they will make new pieces of iron out of that. So that is recyclable. But like petrol, diesel and other fuel items cannot be recycled. Once we use, it is finished and gone. Now, on the basis of ownership, we can divide this into, into different resources. We know somebody has to be the owner. Some resources, some private people are resource, no, owner. For some resources, the government is the owner. For some resources, the local village is the owner. So, for different resources, there is different owner, owner is there. For some resource, we can say the whole world is the owner. For example, air. It is the, the whole world. We can, no country can say this air is mine. For this air belongs to our country. No, it belongs to everyone in the world. So, let us see what are we. So, on the basis of ownership, based on who is the owner of the resource, the first one is, we can say, individual resources. There is individual resource. So, every one of us has got our own. So, the textbook that belongs to you, that is your resource, that is your individual resource. It does not belong to anyone else. It belongs to you alone. So, that is example of individual resource. So, these are also owned by private individuals. So, all the individual resources are owned by private individuals. So, whatever belongs to me, that is mine. So, we can again say that is private or that is individual resources. Many farmers own land which is allotted to them by the government against payment of revenue. So, we know all of you, your family has got land. You have good house. So that all given to you by government. Government gives you permission to take so much land with you or that house with you. Provided you pay the tax to the government. You have to pay you know, tax. For here, you may not be paying tax because there is a lot of exceptions are there. People who belong to scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. So you may not be paying. But normal cases, every person once in a year they have to pay tax, land tax to the government, house tax to the government and so on. So government allows you, okay this land belongs to you, nobody else will come and take it. So government gives us guarantee because we are continuously paying tax to the government. So that is uh, my individual land. The land belongs to me, I am paying tax to the government, therefore it belongs to me. It is an example of individual resource. Then, you also will find there are many people with land ownership, but there are also people who are without land. So, urban people own plots, houses and other property. So, people in the village, they will have a plot, farmland. But people who are in the town, in the urban area, they may not have any big land. They may have their house there in the town. A small piece of land and they will be making buildings there. 
So they may have flat, they may have lodged, they may have other property within the house and so on. So all that is private in your resources. Then plantation, plantation, people who are planting a big area of cultivated uh, trees or vegetables or crops and so on. Then there are also ponds, pond, or if you have a pond you can grow fish and so keep water and grow fish. Then pasture lands are there, if you have plenty of animals you can send them to eat grass in the pasture land. Then waterfall, water in the wells, all these are examples of individual resources. So whatever belongs to my family or myself, that is individual resource. Nobody else can come and say, this is mine. It is given to us with authority by the government. Therefore, we don't have uh, to share it with others. It belongs to us and we are the complete in charge of these things. Then, you can also make a list of your individual things. What are the things that belong to you? Not to your whole family, but just to you. Maybe your textbooks, your notebooks, your pen, pencil, your mathematical box, and so on. So, make a small list. What are the individual resources that you have? Now, there is another type of resource that is community on resource. That means, community is the owner of that resource. Let's see what are they. So, there are resources which are accessible to all the members of the community. So, we said individual resources belonging to that individual or belonging to that family, not to the entire village and not to all the houses nearby. But there are resources which belong to one entire community, maybe a village community, or maybe a tribe community, or maybe a caste community. It belongs to one community. For example, uh, there are so many things are there which are common to all the people in the village. For example, grazing ground, there may be some common ground. So, all those are about animals, gods or cows or uh, some other animals, buffaloes, you can send them there. So, it belongs to all. All those are about animals, they can send them there for eating grass. Or maybe burial grounds are there. Some grounds are kept common for burying the dead people. So, all the people who belong to that village, they can bury them there. Then, village ponds. There may be a common pond for people to take water, to take bath, to wash clothes and so on. So, all the people in that village have got access to that pond. So, all that is called the community on resource. No individual come and say, only I will take water from this pond. You all don't want. We cannot say. Because it belongs to everyone. It is not belonging to just one individual, but it belongs to everyone. Therefore, nobody can say it is mine, but it belongs to the community. In the same way, there may be public parks, maybe there. So, all the people can go and sit there, relax, sit, talk, chat, and so on. Then there may be picnic spot, maybe there. There may be some place where people can go and have some outing, cook meal, eat, and enjoy. There may be playground, football ground. So all the people of that village can go and play there. Nobody will block them. Nobody can say this ground is mine. No, no, no. So if it belongs to the entire village, then the community, all the members of that community, is the owner of that. Then another one is called national resources. So from the very name we can understand national. It belongs to the nation. It belongs to the country. Let's see what are the resources that are belonging to the entire country. So technically all the resources belong to the nation. So in, if you want to say correctly or technically you can say all the resources belonging to the nation. And the country has legal powers to acquire even the private property for public good. So the government has got the rights, the legal rights 
to take away from the people even the resources that are belonging to them their individual resources can be taken away for the public good not for the use of prime minister or for some other ministers and if it is meant for the public good meant for all the people then government can make use of this uh, individual resource also for example these days you will find the highway is being developed it is broadened so from both side people land is taken away by the government so it is not for government it is meant for the public good therefore people cannot object government can take the private property the land was their private property to belong to the people but government is taking it away and government is giving them compensation so nobody can say i will not give so government has got the right so the road becomes the property of the nation it belongs to all the people then you might have seen roads canals railways being constructed on fields owned by the individual in the same way if the government want to build canal for taking water for irrigation then the canal will be going through some private people's land so they cannot say we will not allow so it is government is doing something for public good therefore they cannot block the government they cannot say we will not give they have to allow also if they want to make railway rain cannot go like this so it makes straight line for the railway and so it will be passing through people's land and so those people have to give their land for government and government will give them some money as a compensation so that is the uh, all that is belonging to government to the nation then urban development authorities get empowered by government to acquire land so people and the authority who are meant who are supposed to develop the urban cities the town they have got permission to take land for from the people to develop the society and all the minerals water resources forest wildlife land within the political boundaries and oceanic area up to 12 nautical miles that is 12 nautical mile means around 22.2 kilometers from the coast comes as territorial water and resources there in long to the nation so all these resources belonging to the nation as a whole what are they the all the minerals that are under the earth the coal the other minerals iron ore we may be gold or the petroleum products all that is there all the minerals that belong to the nation then the wildlife all the wild animals the forest all that is belonging to the nation and the water resources all the rivers belonging to the nation so the government has got the right to make dam and produce electricity or use the water for irrigation purpose so government has got the right so it all belongs to the nation and even government has got beyond the lands even in the sea so every country uh, especially in india which is very close to this indian ocean we have got the coastal line so from the coast 22.2 kilometers we can go that much sea belongs to the nation so people can go there you can do fishing you can do other activities and so on so if you go beyond 22.2 kilometers then we are breaking the boundary it belongs to other nations so we have got access only up to 22.2 kilometers from the shore from the land into the sea we can go that's why sometimes we hear in the news and so our fishermen are captured by other countries maybe by pakistanis by sri lankans and so on because they are crossing this they are going more than 22.2 kilometers that is means we are entering into other territory and so we are uh, they can arrest us they can take away the people and so on and put in the jail and so on then the fourth type of resource is international resource so we came to know about individual resource 
community resource, national resource. Now we come to international resource. There is no limit. International means for the whole universe. Let's see what are they. So there are international institutions which regulate some resources. So there are some organizations are there like the UN, United Nations and so on. Then the oceanic resources beyond 200 nautical miles of the exclusive economic zone belong to open ocean and no individual country can utilize these without the concurrence of international institutions. So one thing that belongs to the international resource is the ocean. So the ocean that is more than 200 nautical miles from a country that belongs to the international group. So let's say committee is there. The committee's name is the concurrence of international institution. So without their permission, nobody can do anything. So even if the ship want to go through that way, they should have the permission of this. They should have the license of this institution, international institution. So no country can say beyond this 200 nautical mile, I will do whatever I want. So everyone should have the permission and so on. So that belongs to everyone. So also we can say the air it belongs to everyone. So these are the four types of resources which are based on the ownership. So we will wind up for today and we will continue again tomorrow about different types of resources which are which are still there to be discussed. I hope you understood today. So we learned about resources which are based on the origin. We said biotic and abiotic. And then we said about resources based on the exhaustibility that we will get over and that we can be reused again. For example, renewable resource and non-renewable resource. Then on the basis of ownership, just now we said about four types of resources. Individual resource, community resource, national resource and international resource. So read nicely your lessons and try to uh, keep it in your heart, keep it in your mind, all these names all the, and try to understand it. Okay, so thank you for listening. Have a nice day.